Hello students, this video is going to help you with the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So Hardy-Weinberg is essentially an equation that measures whether or not a population is evolving. There's a few things that you need to remember um, from the text before you start this lab. So first of all, only a population can evolve. An individual cannot evolve. And a population is a group of individuals of the same species in a given area. Within that popu that population represents a gene pool, okay? And within that gene pool, there is a representation of two different alleles. Alleles are copies of a single gene, okay? Um, there are dominant copies and recessive copies. Typically, we use big A or a capital letter to represent the dominant and little a to represent the recessive. Now keep in mind this dominant does not mean dominant as in there are more of. Dominant is a reference to the phenotype, the phenotypic expression. Okay, Most dominant alleles, there only needs to be one of them for that characteristic to express over the recessive allele. So homozygous dominant is big A, big A. Homozygous recessive is little a, little a. Heterozygous is big A, little a. Okay, Both the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous zygote are going to look the same because they have big A in the genotype. Okay. So think back to biology word references here. Homo means same, hetero means different, zygous refers to the zygote, okay? One allele is a gamete, from one gamete from the mom, one gamete from the dad produces a zygote during fertilization, okay? The allelic representation here is the genotype, geno gene type. The combination of alleles results in the phenotype. Pheno means physical, so the physical type, how the organism expresses the genetic information. Now the Hardy-Weinberg equation is p squared plus 2pq plus q squared. Let me explain this a little bit. So what does p squared mean? It essentially means big A times big A. Big A times big A is the same thing as A squared, okay? Big A times little a, okay, is one heterozygous, is one way to express a heterozygote, but little a, big A, is also a way to express the heterozygous character. So we say 2PQ, which essentially is 1PQ and 1QP. Okay, and here we have little a times little a, a squared, okay? So when we're talking about frequency, you're talking about the occurrence of one allele versus the other in a whole population. So the frequency is always going to equal 1. 0. 0.6 plus 0. 0.4 equals 1. You can also look at this as a percentage, okay? So you have uh, a percent per 100. If you took 0. 0.60 times 100, it'd be 60%, okay? So 60% plus 40% equals 100%, the entire population, okay? So that's how you decode that equation. In the first procedure, you're going to conduct an experiment, which is um, typically called sampling with replacement, okay? You're going to put all the beans back in the bag at the end of each trial. Okay, so table one um, relates to exercise one, okay? So you're going to start with 50 dark beans and 50 light beans, okay? The frequency of this is 50% dark, 50% light, okay? And what you're going to do for expected for all subsequent generations is run these numbers through p squared plus 2pq plus q squared and write down your expect expectation based on the math, okay? 
Um, then you're going to start with generation one. You know that there are 50 beans in the bag that are dark and 50 that are light. You put them in there, okay? And you're going to proceed to pull out zygotes until there are no more beans in the bag, okay? So here in the blue column, you're going to write down how many times you pulled big B, big B, the homozygous dominant, how many times you pulled the heterozygous quality, and how many times you pull the homozygous recessive, okay? Now remember, those are frequencies. So once you do that, you're going to divide these numbers by the total and put that value in these cells here, okay? And then you're gonna put all the beans back in the bag and start with generation two, okay? You know the number of alleles is not changing in the first experiment. You're not taking any beans out of the bag. So this whole entire column is going to be 50. And this whole entire column is going to be 50. What is going to change, this is also, excuse me, going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. What is going to change is the number of genotypes, the random chance of reproduction you're pulling two beans out at a time is going to change per generation and the frequency will change thusly and at the end you're going to average the result of 12 generations and what is your expectation your expectation should be that after you average the variability the random chance that occurs through 12 variations that you would still have these same expectations that you uh, calculated at the very beginning because you know for a fact the population is not evolving. The alleles remain the same. 50 big B, 50 little b. 50 dominant, 50 recessive. Now in the second generation you're going to apply a selection rule, okay, a natural selection rule. You're going to remove half of the little b, little b outcomes in each generation, okay? So with each generation, these values are now going to change. And furthermore, they're going to equal less than 100%. So when you calculate the frequency, um, 100 will no longer be in the denominator, okay? So you go through here and your expectation is based on the Hardy-Weinberg equation, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared, okay? And then your actuals are what you pull out of the bag, the actual experimentation process. So you go through this 12 times, okay? And that is the experiment. Now I know math can be somewhat scary for some of you, but you should really have an okay time dealing with this and please let me know if you need help. Um, there's, you can use Excel, set up that same equation in Excel. So if I were going to do this in Excel, let me show you that quickly. I would have my big B, little b, my big B, little b here, my little b, oops, excuse me, little b, little b, okay? So you have all your generations. Let me add another column. Don't forget to put a title. Okay, so each time you pull big B, big B, let's say in generation one, it's 20 times. And you pull big B, little B, so in the heterozygous, you pull 10 zygotes, zygotes. in the homozygous recessive, you pull 20. This is just an example. Okay, so this is the number, let's add that. Okay. 
Okay, and over here we'll calculate the frequency of genotypes. Okay, so we'll go equals 2 divided by 50 because we pulled them in pairs equals 10 divided by 50 equals 20 divided by 50. Okay, now we can check our work because remember that a frequency always needs to equal 100 because we're sampling the entire population and it equals 1. Perfect. Okay, so then you start in the next generation in sampling with replacement. But remember, your values are going to be different, but the total number of homozygous, or excuse me, the total number of dominant alleles and the total number of recessive alleles is still 50 and 50 because we've put all the beans back in the bag. So in the second generation, you might randomly pull a situation like this, okay? And then when you're done, all of your generations, you're going to average these results. Oops, made a little mistake there. There you go. Okay, so that is table one. In table two, we'll have something a little bit different going on because you're going to add natural selection to the setup. Okay, it'll be important in Excel to, if you're doing this in Excel, to include a column that represents that starting population. Okay, so in the first generation, you'll still have 50 and 50. You'll pull your zygotes out of the bag. You'll figure out the frequency of them. Oops. And, but this time, what will be different is that based on the selection rule of removing half of all the homozygous recessive offspring, your numbers here are going to change, okay? So maybe in the next generation, this is 40, oh, excuse me. This is down to 42, okay? And then in the next generation, you pull some more homozygous recessive offspring out of the population, and now we're down to 36, okay? So you're going to see this number change. And this number is going to stay the same based on that re selection rule, okay? The same thing's going to happen at the end. You're going to average the results and answer the questions based on the effect that selection rule had on the population, i.e., you watched evolution occur and you saw what happened. Describe that. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoy yourselves in this lab. And let me know if you have any questions.